Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Um, those of you who watch my vlogs will know that I'm moving flats. This is actually, this should be alive on a Wednesday and I'll be moving the weekend coming up. So really, 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 really soon. Um, and so I want to do a flat tour, but obviously like you, I did like an empty flat tour when I moved in, which I'll link in the description box. And through me vlogging, you've seen so much of the flat and that this main room which I'm sitting in now is obviously the main event and I've shot so many photos in here so I feel like you guys are really familiar with it even probably the layout um but I wanted to do a flat tower as I'm leaving literally as it is I haven't tidied up and I wanted to do it that way so that kind of even just for my own education of what I'm like um to think about the things how I actually live practically like I watch some people's vlogs and their homes are so spotless and immaculate everything has its place and that will never ever ever be me I can sort of sustain that for maybe a day or two and then slowly things start being everywhere and I, I'm not super messy like everything's always relatively tidy and clean but like you can see behind me there's always pockets of chaos and I just have to accept that that is just what I'm like and we're all different with how we live um, and obviously just generally I think so many people will suffer with feeling suffer is the wrong word but feel laden with how much stuff they have and generally where to keep it all. And then when you're busy and you've just not got time to be tidying up after yourself, it slowly gets out of hand or very quickly gets out of hand rather. Um, so yeah, this is literally how my how I'm gonna show you it now is how it is all the time. So I'm gonna go around, talk about their favorite items, but they're all pieces you've seen before in my old flat as well, but we'll talk about them all. The things that I've loved that I've bought, why I've loved them and why I know I'm gonna keep them forever. Also the things I maybe do differently, I think, I'm at a stage in my life where I've moved once a year for the past, when I lived in Leeds, in the house in Leeds for a year, then Manchester for 18 months, then London for a year, in the old place, a year here, and then onto another place for a year. And then I'm most likely gonna move again at the end of next year. Um, and I think that's a common-ish part of you, definitely your early 20s when you go through uni and you tend to move once a year. But I know quite a few people who move re quite regularly. I know that is a lot. Um, and through that I think it's a privilege in that you learn what does and doesn't work for you but also the, the, the other side of it is that everywhere I live feels kind of temporary um, and so I always know like oh I, I want to make it my own and make it lovely but until something is your own I think you're always limited to how much you want to put into it obviously financially um, and then this flat's been so beautiful I was so lucky that really I could have just had anything in it and it would have still been gorgeous and I've loved living here so 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 much the next place I'm going has got quite a different character to it which I'm really excited about really excited to see what my furniture looks like in there um, and yeah there's going to be some things I do differently which we're going to talk about as we go around so the first thing I'm going to say is that the bay windows are beautiful I'm going to show you them now but they make it really difficult for me to film the other way around because it's going to be so backlit so I'm just going to take the camera off the tripod so excuse the scaffolding um but yeah the bay windows are just the feature of this room, that and the parquet floor, I would say, which I absolutely love. Things like these two chairs, these are Harry Batoa for Noll. Um, this one, the pad always comes off it. But these I bought last year, they were like one of those pieces I'd lusted after for years and I bought them from the Conrad shop. Um, I adore them, like they are so comfortable, you wouldn't believe it, they're so nice to sit in. I love them, I honestly will never tire of them. If I ever see an interior picture on Instagram or Pinterest or whatever with someone else who has them, I'm instantly like, oh my gosh, they're just the best. I love them. Same for this table. This table was the first ever very expensive piece of furniture I bought. I bought it off a website called Panamo, which is amazing and stocks loads of vintage um, furniture. This is by Paolo Piva for B&B Italia. Um, and I absolutely love it. It like it just looks beautiful. It's actually um, relatively easy to keep clean, even though it's glass. I've not really had that much trouble with it, um, and it just looks different from every single angle. And like I'm just gonna crouch down here so you can see what the legs are like. Oh, honestly, it's so 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 good. And on the table, it's gotten slowly more cluttered the more time I've been here with lots of different coffee table books, candles that are nearly burnt out, more coffee table books. In terms of how it's styled, I don't know. I think I'll do it slightly different in my new place, but like, I love having all the candles on there. And for the coffee table books, I've never styled them properly. I've just added them all together as they've come, which I personally like that look as opposed to a really well-polished, 
thought out display everywhere. I like it when it's like, this is the stuff I own and the reason it matches is because I love it. And it's of topics that I'm interested in, an aesthetic that I'm interested in, and that's the tie together. Um, so yeah, this book is, shouldn't be on the top shelf. This one I moved from the other room recently. Before it was this one. And I like it more like this. Eesh. Um, this candle's burnt down dreadfully. It's gone all black. Um, okay, this section's always been a bit of a mess. I'm just watching Friends. The TV stand, um, I'm not going to have any more. I'm going to be selling that because um, the, where I'm living, moving to doesn't need a TV stand. There's um, like built-in built -in shelving where a telly can go on, so I just don't need one. Um, a TV stand was like the hardest thing to buy. You have to find nice off. I'm just currently looking for some chest of drawers, and I'm finding that I have a similar kind of thing. This was from Laradu, and I've really liked it. I think it's kind of as good as TV stands get. Sorry, guys. I thought I would just sit down here and show you properly. So, yeah, the TV stand, I think it was like the best that I could find, really. Um, the television's from Samsung, and they gifted me as part of a job, and it's been like an amazing television. Um, but like I said, it's just going to go on some shelves that are already built in in the next place. And again, I've never really styled it fully. Like, it's got books everywhere, lots of Buffy books, um, some vases here, which I'll try to be a bit more thoughtful with when I move some more candles and yeah just crap everywhere wires everywhere and this is where i'm like not as meticulous as i wish i was with things because i've, I've looked at those wires so many times i'm like oh you need to go tidy it put it away it looks so much better but then i'm always like oh no it looks fine um, and i know i'm always going to be a bit like that and then for this corner this was sort of an accidental corner that's ended up this way. The two prints are designed by my uncle Luigi and they're just leaning here. I think in the new place I'll make an effort to put them on the wall somewhere but I really liked how they've looked like this. This is an old vase from, I can't believe you remember, and all that wax. At my old place, don't you guys remember, I had the, the fireplace and the marble mantelpiece and a candle once was burning for hours and dripped down and all landed on that vase like that. So I love it, I think it's so cool. And then this um, cardboard thing is from Tiger. It was a gift. I really like it and love how it looks with that lamp. So I'd like to keep those two together wherever they are in the new place, but I'm not sure where. And then obviously the paintings, we've talked about so much. They're ones I did. And they were so specific to the space, so I doubt that I'll put them up again, but we'll see. This will be coming with me. This is my Uncle Luigi's. It's a letter store. Oh, there's stuff in that one. There's stuff in that one trying to find an empty one cheek so it's got the um this in every single one which is great but it doesn't mean it can be really used that practically for storage so most of them are empty but i adore this like this is a bit of a bugger in turn is big basically so it's kind of hard to fit into spaces um, and like i said because the drawers are so small and have the the um, like metal thing on them it's not the easiest to actually use practically but i definitely am gonna have it in the new place but it's not one that i'm sure of um, and then here, just a drink stand. This was my dad's old drink stand, and I'll definitely have that somewhere in the new place because I love it. Um, and just oh, like nice filling it up with different bottles of alcohol. I need to go out and find a reason to like buy something like Quantro that you never drink but looks great. You know, stuff like that that your mum always has from recipes and trifles she's made through the years. This corner is a classic example of what I'm like. So this chair is just one of those practical things for me that I come in throw a coat down, like this is what I just had on earlier, put handbags on there, then pick the handbag I want for the day. And I go through phases of being like, okay, put your handbags away properly, and then I'll do it for a couple of days, and then just end up going back to this. Like, it just suits how I live my life. Um, so yeah, they all, it always ends up just being back like this, basically. So, I mean, I don't know what to do, because if I didn't, when I didn't have the chair, I didn't do it. So maybe that's just not having the option of something to put it there, but then I used to put stuff on the table. But then there's still stuff on the table. So it's just one of those things about how I end up being. Um, plant, I'm so bad at keeping plants alive. I think I need to give up the ghost on this one. Um, but I'm going to try and be better and get some plants in a new place and really, really look after them. But all this stuff will be coming with me, um, especially the mirror, which I think is going to be the most the hardest thing to move. My new place is over two floors and it's got quite a narrow staircase. So I, I just, and I want this in the bedroom. And I don't know how that's going to work because it's huge. But I bought it off a website called Sellency. I probably said that wrong. Which is a French, also vintage, secondhand website. 
and it was about six or seven hundred pounds which I know is a lot of money but believe me and if anyone's mirror shopped before for a mirror of this size that is pretty damn good because my god do mirrors get expensive it's unbelievable over here is the table now the table was the one thing when I found my new flat that I was worried wasn't going to fit in because it's pretty huge I bought it from Red Brick Mill which is an amazing um, homeware store up north and I'll link, I'll link it in the description box. I can't remember the specific brand of this, but I'll link Red Brick Mill and you can buy it from there. So it's got these glass legs and it just looks like it's floating and I absolutely love it. And I love it because it's a really big, good table, but because of the glass legs, it just floats in the space. It's not heavy. And I deliberately ended up going with chairs, which I had at my old space, but these worked really nicely because it still means you can see through everything. They are, they're from Laradu. They're some of the most uncomfortable chairs you'll ever sit on, which is why nearly all of them have a cushion on, because you cannot, you cannot physically sit on them without a cushion. They are that uncomfortable. And I'll definitely keep them for now, but they might be something I would change. Um, and this table is where I've ended up working. I'm going to talk about the office later and why that didn't work out for me, but I always ended up working here. And there's always stuff on here. So I've got notepads, cameras, my passport, loads of crap. And what I tend to do is start the day with everything in a neat pile, start working and throughout the day it's chaos and then bring it back to a neat pile. But again, like I should put everything away at the end of the day and it's just not built in me to be like that. Um, similarly, how there ends up being jackets on the back of them. I, although I'm normally quite good at putting clothes away. Um, so those aren't always there. Um, but like a handbag on that, another handbag on there that I just had from coming out earlier. I think there's loads of paper on this one. You know, ugh. I hope lots of you can relate to this in terms of just being like, yes, I too am slightly cha chaotic, even if I wish I wasn't, and try really hard not to be. And like, like I said, I'll go through phases, I'll be really good, but all it takes for me to be a bit busy and a bit too stressed or even if I'm like in the zone with something, this just ends up just being like this. Um, but yeah, this is gonna be in the new place in a similar situation to this in like the living dining space. So I'm gonna try and be better. And so maybe what I need to do is have another surface to keep all this crap on or like get a little basket to put it all in. I don't know. Suggestions down below welcome, especially if you are someone who is like me and you know this is what you're prone to if you've done something. Maybe a basket would work and then I could put everything in it and then just move it to the side let me know anyway the kitchen this is probably my least favorite room in the house because it's really dark so there is a massive window here but it obviously back straight onto the next house like you can see so it's just a really dark room and the, for some reason the acoustics of it when someone's sat on the sofa in there i can't i can barely hear what they're saying when i'm in here so it's not social at all to be in here if you're cooking for somebody in there out there so it's been my least favourite room. Thankfully I'm not a massive cook so I've not spent much time in here. Um, but yeah, loads of recycling. I had a friend around earlier in the week who drank a lot of whiskey and coke which is why there's that many coke cans for the recycling. Um, and in this neck of the woods in London the way the bins work is that you put them out on the street twice a week and they get collected. So I tend to like collect my recycling and you don't have a wheelie bin to put stuff in. So it tends to collect here and then, then I put it all out twice a week which doesn't really bother me too much because I've not normally got that much stuff. Some vases, which because I'm moving next week, I don't have any fresh flowers in. Um, and yeah, there's not much to show you in here. Like I said, it's just some potatoes because I'm cooking a roast later. It just is what it is and I've never made much of it. Like I've got some things that I love, but like I said, I'm not much of a kitchen person. These I've had since I was in Manchester and I really like. Um, the oil and vinegar things, but my next um, place has a really lovely kitchen so I'm definitely going to make much more of an effort to make it space I want to be and I want to start cooking more and looking after myself more in that sense um, and yeah this just hasn't been a space I want to spend much time in. Okay so now we're just walking out of the living room down the corridor loo at the end there's nothing to say about the toilet um, it's like a separate toilet and bathroom and it's fine and that's been great um, we'll do the bedroom one of the weird things in this flat is that there's no lights on the ceiling um, which has gotten kind of annoying. So let me just turn on the bedside lamp while I um, uh, while I talk everything through because it is always really dark in here. So the bedroom's another place for me where all the way I am practically comes through. Like the fact there's piles of clothes in places. Um, so this is stuff that like I've just taken out of the washing a lot of it. Um, these are the comfies that I had on this morning. These are stuff that I've been shooting or things that I still need to shoot. Um, so yeah, there's always a slight level of mess because of that. 
The bedding um, is from Conran Shop, and I've ordered some more linen bedding from Made.com, but the Conran Shop bedding is well worth the money. It's super pricey, but this just gets better and better and better with every wash. Honestly, it's so soft. I love the fact you can just have it all creased and it looks amazing. Conran have a great selection of colours as well, um, and it just gets softer, and in the winter it keeps you warm, and in the summer it keeps you cool. It's just the best. Um, the two bedside tables are from Laradu. I built them myself, so the doors keep falling off them both, which is not Laradu's fault, well, it's definitely my fault. Um, and yeah, I'm not going to have bedside tables in my new space because I'm going to have a different bed. This bed's going to go in the second bedroom. I'll talk about the reasoning behind that in a second. And these will go in the second bedroom, but it's just got like a water bottle, hand cream, a book and stuff like that. And the lamps are from, I got them from We Are Truva. Um, I still really like them, it goes with the vibe of this bedroom and I'm basically going to pick this room up, drop it into the spare room at the next place so it's going to feel the same but then do my main bedroom a little bit differently. Um, but yes, it is very poor, poorly lit throughout all the back of the house um, and every time Lindsay's here she's like, I don't know how you cope with doing your makeup and stuff. Um, the bathroom, I don't think there's much to say. Again, I tend to like line my products on the side of the bath. My new place is a separate bath and shower, so that's so much better for that because you, you know, I think it's normal to have all your stuff just on the side in the shower on the floor. Um, but yeah, I always, you know, it's just, you've got a lot of stuff that you need to use in a bathroom, and so there's not much to say about this. It's, I've liked this bathroom though, it's been like a decent size, but I'm excited to have a separate bath and shower. So finally, let's talk about this spare room, which also doesn't have any lights. Turn on the lamp. So this, I'm going to sit down. This, when I moved from my first place, because I work at home, obviously, and oh, good, how, how well, excuse me, you guys will remember my old flat, but it was like one big room with a bedroom off it, a kitchen, a toilet. And it wasn't a studio at all because it was separate rooms, but it felt very much like a studio. Like there was clothes everywhere. I worked in the main room and the layout of it just made me feel like there was no separation between work and life whatsoever. And by the time I left, I was really struggling with that. Sorry, it's so bright. So then when I really, when I moved, I really wanted a two bed place so that I could have an office. So then I found this, had this as the office and used it loads to begin with and really, really liked it. Um, and just liked having the separation and it felt really nice. I loved working at my desk. The desk is also from Lara Duke, by the way. And just loved this space. And then for a while, for ages actually, like a good couple of months, the Wi-Fi wasn't reaching down this end of the house and I've got boosters and stuff and it just wasn't working. So then I started working in the main room because I just couldn't couldn't connect my laptop to the Wi-Fi well enough here. Like even my phone when I was in bed, it would be on for 4G. Um, so then I started working through there a little bit and I realised that even though that's still the space I go to relax and watch telly if I do that, because I've walked down this corridor to, bed to my bedroom, when it comes to that time of day, there's such a separation. And I know that sounds really bizarre and I think that anyone who works from home will be able to understand a little bit. But just, for, just that was enough, just from walking down that corridor. And then I ended up always working in there because it's close to the kitchen and I was up and down like getting parcels and stuff and just really enjoyed working in the main space of the house in a way that I did enjoy working in the main space of my house at the old place. It wasn't working in that space that was the issue. It was then finding the time to relax when it felt like the whole flat was just that space. So in conclusion, from that I have learned that in my new flat, which is also two bedrooms, I'm going to keep the second bedroom as a bedroom. So that like when mum comes to stay, she can have her own bed. Like if friends come over and we all have a bit to drink and they don't live nearby, like if they live in another part of London, they can just sleep over. And of course people are welcome to stay over and stay in my bed, but it's always so much nicer if you stay in someone's house and you've got your own bed, isn't it? So that is the thinking. So the desk is gonna go as well. Um, a lot of things in this room are gonna go going back up to mum's cause she'll keep them in her garage. She's got a big garage for me. Like this metal chest, which I've had since I was in Leeds. I bought it from home since. And I still really like it, but it just uh, doesn't have a space in the new place at all. So um, yeah, th this stuff is mostly all gonna go back up north. And then I'm gonna um, have the second bedroom as a bedroom. This is definitely coming with me. This print is of Tropea, I've talked about before. Um, and then above this bit, I have a Bob Dylan one, which is I bought from a shop in Manchester. Can't remember the name of it, but I will link it in the description box. And I love that print, I love, love, love it. Um, and the, the shop that I got it from has lots of great prints, so I will link that definitely. I just can't believe you remember the name of it. 
Um, and yeah, this, oh, I'm half packed up stuff in here, that's why there's been bags of things and boxes, so this room I've started packing up already. So I won't talk about how it looks at the moment because um, it doesn't normally look like this. But the other negative thing about having a room that then I wasn't using was that it became a space where like, if a parcel came or some clothes came and that I needed to shoot, or just all the stuff, I just ended up putting it in here and shutting the door and being like, oh, forget about it, I will deal with it later. And then it meant that the room was like, completely looked dreadful felt dreadful but also that i was then relying on it for to keeping stuff that i didn't need or want because i had the option because i had the space so i think i'd sooner have keep all the rooms as a fully functioning used rooms not have a room to throw things in i know the spare room does often become the bit of that anyway um but try and refrain from that as much as possible so then it also keeps me on top of just how much stuff i've got but also make sure that like every room feels feels really nice and there were stages where this one really didn't feel nice and even when i'm sat in it now like it doesn't feel like a lived-in room where the rest of the flat really really does so guys let's go back into the main room um i hope you've enjoyed this i know it's been like a very informal flat tour but i hoped it was like somewhat relatable if you're like yeah i'm also like a little bit of a chaotic mess nearly all of the time or maybe you're one of those that was the tripod going down maybe you're one of those really annoyingly tidy and organized people um, and like I said I go through phases of it but it just doesn't come naturally to me to be really tidy and I actually really like living in a bit of mess and I love it when you go to someone's house and you sit there and there's so much you want to look at like the really minimalist style isn't for me I love it when you're like oh my, I want to see what that is and there's books and there's pictures and there's just things you want to get up and look at and I've talked about it a lot, but my uncle Luigi, who's an architect, is always my ultimate interior design inspiration. And every house he's ever lived in, ever done up, he has so many beautiful, beautiful items, like beautiful design pieces that he's had for years, that he's bought over the years. And they all just match, they all just work, but none of them do match. But it's just like, because they're all beautiful, because he loves them all, because they mean something, you walk into the space and you're like, this all works for some reason. Even if nothing is fully planned or coherent, and he's got so much stuff. I mean, he's almost a hoarder, but he has got so much stuff. But through that, there's just so much character in every space he's in. And so much you want to look at, the most amazing artwork just collected over the years. And that's exactly what I want to do and wherever I live, I don't want it to be restricted by an aesthetic I'm trying to create. I just want the aesthetic to be me and my taste. Does that make sense? Not playing into a certain aesthetic that's popular at the time or whatever. Um, sorry, somebody is messaging me a hell of a lot. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the inspiration I want going forward and, and that's why I'm really excited to move into a space that's got a very different feel to this one in my previous place because I think it's going to really put that to the test of like how is that working out for me of are there all the pieces that I have that I feel will work in any space for me are they going to and time will tell you, the moving vlogs are going to start soon I'll do an empty flat tour of the place that I'm moving to um, or a house it's a little house empty house tour and then obviously start putting all my stuff in um, but I, I think I'll have quite a bit of home content but not loads in terms of doing stuff up and buying loads of things all the time because the whole point of these pieces I've bought and invested in is that I want them forever um, and that's again going back to what i think about the way luigi's done his homes throughout the years um and yeah thank you so much for watching all, all the things i've mentioned if available will be linked in the description box um and yeah i'll see you in the next one which will be a moving vlog